Hey everyone, welcome back to another video here on the Wreath Network on TryHackMe. Today we're going to be taking a look at task 11, pivoting with Plink.exe. Plink.exe is a Windows command line version of PuTTY SSH, or of the PuTTY SSH client. Uh, you can actually find this on the PuTTY SSH website. Uh, now that Windows comes with its own inbuilt SSH client, Plink is less useful for modern servers. However, it is still a very useful tool, so we'll cover it here. Whenever you're working with legacy equipment, um, legacy Windows servers, this is going to be very, very useful if you're not using a uh, command and control server, which is something we'll talk about later on in this network. Generally speaking, Windows servers are unlikely to have an SSH server running, so our use of Plink tends to be a case of transporting the binary to the target, then using it to create a reverse connection. This would be done with the following command. So we can do command or cmd.exe, dash C echo Y. I won't read out that entire one, but you can copy and paste that. This is something that I'd recommend adding to your notes. I typically, whenever I'm using Plink, I'll just reference my cheat sheet just because it's something that I use infrequently enough, but frequently enough that I need to have it in my cheat sheet. Um, and just having this and having it spelled out nicely like this with an example after the fact makes it nice and easy. And you can even see there's a nice example right here. Adding a little bit of notes with that makes it easy. Notice that this syntax is nearly identical to previous, uh, previously when using the standard open SSH client. The cmd.exe forward slash c echo y at the start is for non-interactive shells, uh, like most reverse shells, uh, with Windows shells being difficult to stabilize in order to get around the warning message that the target has not connected to the host before. So this is just saying, yeah, we don't really care that we haven't connected before. We're going to ignore that. We need to check the fingerprint. Um, to use our example from before, if we have access to 10.10.10.5 and wouldn't like to forward a connection to 10.10.10.80 back to port 8000 on our own attacking machine, 10.10.10.20, we could use this command. Uh, so cmd forward slash c echo y, and then we're piping that into plink.exe. Uh, so that's just, this first part is just confirming that we are saying, yeah, we, we know that we haven't connected to this host before. And then this is standard SSH syntax that we had in the previous task before. Note that any keys generated by SSH keygen will not work properly here. You'll need to convert them using the putty gen tool. This is an important thing to note down, uh, which can be installed on Kali using the sudo apt install putty tools. A lot of times you can just do this on a Windows host as well if you have PuTTY installed on it. However, doing it on your Kali machine can be a lot faster rather than playing the file transfer game. After downloading the tool, conversion can be done with PuTTY gen key file dash O, so lowercase O, and then output underscore key dot PPK. Uh, note that this is, I believe, PuTTY private key in that specific case for that uh, extension. Substituting in a valid file for the key file and adding in the output file. The resulting .ppk file can then be transferred to the Windows target and used in the exactly the same way as with the reverse port forwarding taught in the previous task. Despite the private key being converted, it will still work perfectly with the same stored public key. Note, Plink is notorious for going out of date quickly, which often results in failing to connect back. Always make sure you have an up-to-date version of the .exe Plus, there's a copy pre-installed at Kelly. Uh, this is almost always out of date. This is actually a really good note here. Uh, you should always, always, always pull a new copy either before your engagement or just grab it on a private uh, connection during your engagement. Make sure you're not pulling this on your client's network because this is, if it shows up on a network, it's probably being used maliciously. All right. What tool can be used to convert open SSH keys into PuTTY style keys? That is PuTTY Gen. And that is going to do it for task 12. I will see you guys in the next video for task 13. But until then, happy hacking.